Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This week we're going to be making chicken fried rice. And there's a reason for that. About a month ago, roughly, a comedian by the name of Nigel put out a reaction video to a BBC, Nets British Broadcasting Channel video of a woman named Hersha Patel, who's one of their hosts, cooking egg fried rice. And he didn't agree with a lot of the choices she made making that rice, and it's very funny. I'm going to link the video in the description if you want to watch the original video. Um, but ever since then, everybody's been kind of, you know, either reacting to the reaction video, which, you know, I don't really do reaction videos, um, or cooking their own version of, of fried rice. So I'm going to get into the fun a little bit here, make my own version, which I guarantee he will not approve of, but I have a walk. So I'm halfway there already, um, and let's get going. Now, one thing he and I do agree on is you're going to want to use day-old rice. Uh, this is rice that you've cooked the day before put in a container, put in the fridge, let it get good and cold overnight, and then bring it out when you get ready to make your fried rice. So I traditionally use the Instant Pot to cook rice because it makes the best rice that I've ever seen. And it's very easy, you know, there's one cup of rice, and this isn't instant rice, this is actual, you know, uncooked rice. And one cup of rice, one cup of water, I made four cups, whoop, nope, I keep doing that. Four cups in total, <laughs> so four cups of dry rice, four cups of water, run it through for around, you know, 20 to 22 minutes, and I usually run mine around, you know, 20, and then when it's done, you just take it out, take the lid off, let it cool off for a second, scoop it out, put it in a container, and then put it in the fridge and let it chill overnight. So we're going to proceed, assuming that you've already made your rice, that it's already been chilling overnight in the fridge, and we're just going to start off cooking the ingredients. So you're going to start off, first of all, with your chicken, which I will open up here. And I generally use tongs to handle the chicken, just because it saves time, me not having to wash my hands every five seconds while I'm recording. But obviously, everybody does things their own way. I'm going to go ahead and set this all out here. I'm just using uh, chicken breast tenderloins. And while that, I'm going to set that out there. And then while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and get this wok started. A little bit of oil. Put it up to around 200 degrees to start. Just that. A little more. Set that aside. And we like to have, in my family, just kind of small chunks of chicken. So I'm going to go ahead and set these down the middle. Cut them down the middle, I should say. Obviously chicken shrinks when you cook it, so you don't want to get too small or else you'll end up with just stuff disintegrating. But And maybe if you have a non-stick wok, you don't need the oil. This is a cast iron wok, so I'm just going to go ahead and continue cutting this up and then we'll put it all together and then we'll get started on the onion. And chances are you're going to want to cut up your chicken and your onions before you start heating up the wok. So 
learn from my mistakes. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is go ahead and take a half of an onion. In this case, I'm using a yellow onion and just cube it up roughly, you know, half inch to three quarters of an inch cubes um, so that it will break into that, you know, roughly those those dimensions of uh, slices of onion each layer and just heat them both up. Um, add a little more oil if you need to, but the onions are going to sweat a little bit and just stir them together and cook them until they're done. So I'm using a vegetable knife and again, probably cut up onions before. Just cut that and I usually make a pass down the side and then peel the top most layers off. Set those aside and everything else can go in. And a couple of things about cutting up onions. First is the sharper your knife is, the less, you know, spray is going to come up off the onions and, you know, the less it's going to make you tear up. Also, the faster you cut, <laughs> the less time you spend cutting up the onion, the less it's going to affect you. So I'm going to go ahead and these will break up mostly. Probably should have cut them a different way. But again, keeping it real. They don't have to be cut up uh, super fine. Like I said, a half to three quarters of an inch. So save a bunch of time. There. So that's roughly the, these are going to break up as they cook. So that's roughly where you want them. Just go ahead and put them in. Two second rule. And as I said before, you can't be afraid if it starts to look a little dry, add a slight amount of oil to it. I'm using a vegetable oil, cholesterol free vegetable oil. And you're also going to want to add in a just a touch of either soy sauce or liquid aminos that you're using. Try not to add too much because you don't want it to add too much liquid into the mix. But uh, you do want it to begin to incorporate some of those flavors in with the onions and into the chicken. And again, I've added a slight amount of oil to this in addition. Obviously it's not building up in the bottom. And I've also added some liquid aminos, which I will show you the brand I'm using. And this is, you can use this or soy sauce interchangeably, whatever you can get most easily, whatever your, you know, family enjoys. And then once you have everything in the wok, go ahead and turn up the temperature a little bit. I'm going up to around 212, which isn't a big jump, but. And then just go ahead and cook until the chicken has a slight amount of char on the outside of it, just, you know, darkening. And not char as in black, but char as in darkening. And uh, the onions are translucent. Once you reach a point where your chicken is cooked, your onions are translucent and done, we're gonna go ahead and start on the sauce. Now, I know what you're saying, Nobody puts, fry, nobody puts sauce in fried rice. You gotta hear me out. The ingredients here I have laid out, a little bit of oil. This is also going to help the rice fry, not stick to the wok. A little bit of MSG. Again, liquid aminos, not a ton because we don't want it to be too liquidy. And also some bouillon. I'm using 
better than bullion. Uh, it's kind of a paste, which again, cuts down on the moisture. I don't want to use powder, just I, I found that this works way better. So we're going to go ahead and add that in now. As you can see, the chicken and the onions are cooked all the way through. I've gone ahead and turned off the heat so that I'm not racing to get these ingredients for the sauce in before this burns. And these are very close to the uh, limit of how far I would cook things. Uh, so we're going to head and add in first some oil. And again, remember, I'm adding four cups, over four cups of finished rice to this. So you want enough oil so that that rice isn't going to stick. Because again, this is a non-stick wok. Then I'm going to add a slight amount of liquid aminos. Not going to overdo it because, again, I don't want it too wet. All right, and then a little bit of MSG. That one's just for Uncle Roger. And we're going to start off with a third of a cup of the Better Than Bullion. And you can see it's kind of a paste, so I'm going to go ahead and add this in. And under low heat, go ahead and stir this all together. If it looks really heavy on seasoning with all that bullion, remember that we're going to be adding a ton of rice to this, and it's going to coat all that rice, so it's not going to be anywhere near this thick. This is basically just to glaze of the chicken and the onions first. We want that dark brown color. Go ahead that and let that heat up while I go get the rice. And once everything starts bubbling slightly, and you can sense that the heat's starting to get through the pan from where it was shut off earlier, you're going to go ahead and add in your rice. Now, again, I cooked four rice, uh, four rice, four cups of brown rice. Here I have stored in the most elegant of containers, the Ziploc bag. So you go ahead and add that in at this point. And always cover your bullion. Slide it off to the side. Go ahead and add in your rice. This is probably closer to eight cups of rice. And then you're gonna go ahead and stir this all together. You'll have to go really slow at first because the rice will be dry from being cold and in the fridge. But as that coating starts to go everywhere, it'll start to keep the rice in check, so to speak. It'll become slightly more wet, but not wet to the point of where, you know, you won't uh, want to eat it. I typically will stir this up before I decide on adding any more oil if it starts to look like it needs a little bit. Because you won't really know how, how much of a mixture you have until you get to everything being already incorporated. And as you know, it's always easier to add more than to remove.
break up any large chunks you have. And again, this is a little dense to stir, so I would go slowly. I have the heat on 200, which is more about heating it up origin and you know, until everything gets stirred together. And you'll get a sense of how much oil there is sticking stuff. You don't want any oil, like as you can see here, you don't want any oil collecting at the bottom of the pan because that means you have too much. I'm going to go ahead and add a dash more oil. I'm talking maybe a teaspoon. And as you, you know, stir everything, it will get incorporated. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Stir that until the rice starts to darken on its own slightly. It'll be tough to see because of all the bullion we've added, but you'll know it will start to smell. All those smells will kind of marry together. And it's important to keep the rice moving. Um, you know, you want to put in the minimum amount of oil that you need to keep this from uh, sticking to your pan. But at the same time, you need to keep it moving or else it's going to burn at the bottom. So again, you know, maybe five, seven minutes on medium, uh, medium to low heat. Keep it moving. And this is going to remove some of the moisture and keep the rice from clumping. You don't want the rice to clump together. This is also one of those things where you have to listen to it. If it sounds like it's sizzling, then you definitely need to be stirring. And you can adjust your temperature if you need to, but again, keep it as low as possible because this can burn rather quickly. Uh, it's going to dry out slightly. You know, again, I'm making this amount here for, you know, lunches during the week, meals at night. You know, it's going to keep for a couple of days. And over that time, the moisture, the little bit of remaining moisture in here is going to absorb into the rice. So it's just going to get better. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and taste it here to make sure I get the seasoning just right. Damn. That's pretty much right on the money for my tastes. Um, if you like your fried rice with more vegetables in it, go ahead and add that. And I'm also going to cook up an egg and stir that in as well after the fact because I don't want the egg to take on too much of the bouillon seasoning. I want that to keep its own flavor so we'll go ahead and do that now. I've gone ahead and set the rice aside for now. I've grabbed a cast iron skillet, added a slight amount of oil to the bottom of it, swirl it around so that nothing sticks to the bottom and let that heat up roughly around 200 degrees and I'm going to go ahead and crack two eggs into there. It's okay if it's not hot at first. You want to be able to scramble this. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And the second egg. And like I said, we're just going to whisk this around. Don't do this with a non-stick pan, with the uh, metal implement obviously, but it's one of the reasons I went with a cast iron. And if you get clumps, go ahead and break them up. That's heating up. I'm going to go ahead and add a little salt and pepper to this. As you do, and then keep
And again, you don't want to singe these, you just want them to be cooked all the way through. Once all the moisture's out of them, go ahead and add them to the rice. Now I've gone ahead and brought my rice back up here. Make sure that's not sticking to each other, or the individual pieces I should say. And then go ahead and drop the eggs in. This helps up the protein on it also, which is one of the benefits of this dish. See, it's not all sodium. <laughs> so go ahead and get that all incorporated in and then just stir it in. And again, you want this so that the color of the eggs will show through a little bit. And if I had added it in earlier, a lot of that bouillon would have just made the eggs this brown, the same brown color as everything else. And just stir that up so the eggs are uniformly distributed. Should have little flecks of yellow all through it. Just like that. And we're done. And again, there's many ways to make fried rice. This is my way. Uncle Roger has his way. Uh, you know, Jamie Oliver, Gordon Ramsay, all those guys have their own way. Their ways are probably better than mine, but I like this, and you might too. So it's definitely worth a shot. Uh, go ahead and let me know down below in the comments if you give it a shot and if you like it. Um, I thought it was an interesting attempt to use the bullion in this fashion in rice. And uh, you may not want to go quite so heavy on it as I do, but I like having that really heavy flavor in the rice. So... Uh, if you don't really care for that, if you like more of a traditional rice flavoring, maybe go lighter on that. But uh, other than that, this is really good. And, you know, again, many different variations. You can add more vegetables. Some people add peas, carrots. You know, some people top it with uh, shallots or green onions. But uh, for me, this is pretty good. Um, excuse me. Again going to get better. Tomorrow I'm going to put this in small containers for my lunch and tomorrow it'll be better than it is right now and it's pretty darn good right now. So uh, thank you again for watching and as always there's only three things left to do. One, which I've already done, so thank, but thank you again for watching and uh, going through the whole video with me and two, remind you to like the video Subscribe it down below if you want to see more. And uh, finally, I'm going to get you that food porn.